Uh, let's get to Austin, Texas, where Republican Congressman Blake Farenthold is joining me now. And uh, Congressman, you know, you heard the president who said uh, all the arguments for the pipeline are gone, which is it would have created jobs in the U.S. and it would have lowered oil prices. And you heard the president say we've already seen both. So why do we need this pipeline? Listen, we need energy independence, we need a diversity of sources, and this is our relationship with Canada. Not only would that pipeline have been used to bring oil from Canada, they could have also added oil that's produced within the United States. And transferring oil by pipeline is by far the safest way to do it. I'd much rather have an oil pipeline running under my backyard than uh, live near a, a highway or railroad where they're transporting uh, oil. Uh, but Congressman, it's not as if this oil is, is not going to be able to be transported. It will now be transported in other ways, primarily railroad. And, and the president seems to think that by not approving this pipeline, he, that oil isn't going to be used. I mean, that's kind of the undertone from what I've heard. The oil is there, and it's going to find its way to market. Whether it's in the United States, where it will be refined under our higher environmental standards, or whether it'll go uh, west and eventually make it on a ship to China, where they don't have our environmental standards. I actually think we're doing more damage to the environment by not approving this pipeline than we would be if we were improving it. Uh, so, Congressman, what are you going to do now? What can be done? I think it's going to be, uh, Phil had it right, we're going to have to wait until we've got a new president. Uh, Obama has uh, dug his heels in the ground, and unfortunately we don't have a veto-proof majority. As I talk to some of my Democrat colleagues in Washington, they say even voting for the Keystone Pipeline they could do, but it would be a much harder vote to override a president of their own party's veto. Uh, you know, I, I think you do the right thing and, and vote to override, but there aren't the votes there right now. Uh, but Congressman, if you do bring this issue back, let's say after 2016, I mean, most economists don't expect, for instance, oil prices to have really rebounded that much. So uh, the argument that this would help lower oil prices is not really there anymore. Well, I think it ensures a, a longer-term energy supply, and you've got to have a, a reliable network of various sources of your energy, whether multiple sources of uh, crude oil and natural gas, or be it uh, nuclear or other types of power. You, you need a diversity there. Uh, okay, Congressman, I want to play for you part of, because we had, of course, obviously, the, the, the president this morning uh, speaking on this, uh, on this decision. Uh, this is part of, of what he said about, about what went into the reasoning for rejecting the pipeline. The pipeline would not make a meaningful long-term contribution to our economy. So if Congress is serious about uh, wanting to create jobs, this was not the way to do it. So why is he wrong here? I mean, I understand your argument that uh, the Keystone Pipeline uh, goes in some, somewhat a, a way towards our energy independence, but it is not the only way, Congressman, for us to achieve that. Of course not, and it may not have the long-term construction jobs, but it does have short-term construction jobs, and we've got Americans in need of a job right now, today. This would put them to work, and there'll be other projects that come along to keep the, those folks at work. It'll also uh, secure refining jobs in uh, Cushing and Houston and uh, other locations. So it may not have a huge impact, but you don't pass up an opportunity to grow jobs in a, in a the United States where we have relatively high unemployment and an even more dismal employment uh, workforce participation rate. All right, Congressman, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much. Congressman Blake Farenthold uh, of Texas joining me there from Austin and still